Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. Today is Tuesday, and this webinar is presented to you by BD Swiss, intended for its clients. And before I start, you may go through this risk warning. Uh, it is very important, and anything that we discuss over here uh, must uh, not be taken as a signal. It, it's only for educational purposes. Okay, keep this in mind. So let me start without wasting any time. Let me share my screen. The MT5. Allow me a minute, please. Okay, this is uh, the MT5, and I will take you through the events uh, for today. Okay, uh, what happened? What were the market updates and everything? I'll start. Uh, with the events overnight, what happened? Okay, we had the report uh, from the UK retail sales, and that was, uh, you know, it was well below the expectations. Let me see the mm -hmm. data. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, the overnight report from the UK retail sales, it was below the expectations and same goes for the Canada uh, retail sales, okay, Canadian retail sales. And then we had uh, a good data from the US durable uh, good orders and it was unexpectedly better uh, in a th you know, third month in a row. Okay, and then we had this US Michigan consumer sentiment and that data was also better than expected. So this was all what was done overnight. Okay, and then uh, the German IFO data, uh, it was weaker than expected. Okay, so this is just uh, an image or a representation of what data facts happened overnight. But the major, uh, you know, the major uh, facts uh, or news that are moving the markets, let me share with you right now. Allow me a minute, please. Yeah, I hope you can see this. I'll start with the USD and for the reference, I'll be using the gold chart. Okay, what what do we see yesterday? The USD speculation persists that the Federal Reserve may maintain a restrictive stance longer than expected. Supported by the cautious Fed policymakers, a strong US economy, inflation, and a tight labor. So what, what they're trying to say is that they'll be using a cautious stance and maybe they can you know, linger on this uh, rate uh, cut policy uh, above or ahead than September. And this is what they are saying, and uh, let me explain you. There is a 50% probability as per CME uh, Group's Fed watch tool that the Fed will maintain interest rates in September, okay? It's in September. Cautious stance on inflation has raised concerns about potential rate cuts. And uh, uh, one second. Sir Stuart, yeah. that is what we have been talking earlier. You know that the better print may have this type of thing that they can linger on this stuff while keeping in mind this all election stuff and this elections in the US and elections uh, in the uh, you know in the UK. So this was and, what yeah, we were and, talking and now. We have got this. Yeah. 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 No, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what we talked uh, about last week, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. It's, it's, sorry. sorry <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we yeah. were the first one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, it's, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I know, and even someone really questioning the September uh, validity of the move as well. So, yeah, keep an eye on this one um, yes. uh, and see what happens. Uh, obviously, the dollar's weakened a wee bit yesterday. But yeah. Yeah. Very good point. Yeah. Yes, sir. And then later on, uh, I'll, uh, you know, share this uh, weekly profile. Uh, on the dollar chart, on the gold chart, you can see that this market this week it has opened below the value area of the last week. So a test of this area may, uh, you know, lower this given that uh, the dollar gets uh, weaker or stronger. Or it's already depend yeah. on that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and then the next thing that happened, uh, you know, the main thing is this one. Let me go to the AUD chart. I'll just take a minute. This one. Okay, so what updates do we have from the AUD is, you know, the Australian dollar was also influenced by the recovery of copper and iron prices, you know, by night we had this uh, uh, recovery in that prices that maybe that is the reason why this we have seen this bullish engulfing candle over here in the AUD. Okay, the uh, what is the history of AUD, the background, the bigger picture, the macro picture is that the RBA maintained its interest rate at 4.35% and discussed potential interest rate hikes 
aligning with the Fed's monetary policy stance. So these two banks like RBA and Fed are, you know, like going in a saying that, uh, you know, higher for longer or later on, they will discuss uh, whether they want to uh, go for a rate cuts or not. Okay. Future markets predict no more cuts by the RBA in 2024. This is what, you know, the poll from the Reuters is uh, uh, letting us know with expectations for a neutral stance at the June meeting. And again, yeah. this yeah. brings us to the same point that we were discussing earlier, earlier, that what happens if we see a neutral stance by them? They will be lingering on because of this uh, massive streak of positive data they have been uh, getting all around. Okay, so uh, one more thing. And if you can just allow me... Uh, minute okay uh what news do we have from the rba it was if you can just focus on the may 8th the rates were unchanged okay high rates till the second half of the 2025 this is what uh the uh, the rba said in its meeting and then inflation projections were high inflation projections were high but they have cut their gdp projections okay so uh, if inflation is going up or the projections are high and the gdp is down maybe see some sort of stagnation or a stagflation whatever obviously the upcoming data will uh, you know uh, give us more picture about that okay this was something regarding the australian dollar and now <laughs> the bigger mover of the night was euro let me take with the euro chart just allow me a minute and we have massive data prints from the euro okay i'll just uh, show you the uh, the glimpse of that uh so can you see my screen i mean is yeah it yeah, yeah that's good it's it's it, nice and clear okay, I've, I've zoomed right in so um we can yeah. see it all i'll just take well. a minute yeah, a, yeah. yeah. i'll even just though, take a minute for this yeah yeah, Please, I was say, even though the US, uh, UK and US was closed yesterday, you were right. There was lots of news came out of Europe. So if you just want to summarize uh, yes. yesterday's action. Um, yes, sir. Know, yes, sir. I'll just wrong. take a minute. I'll just take a minute. Uh, uh, what the euro is, uh, uh, you know, what news do we have from the euro? The ECB is that they are, there's an 80 percent chance for a June rate cut. OK, this is what we have from the euro. But there are uh, some, uh, you know, officials who are wanting to go for a linger on stuff. OK. Mm. OK, mm -hmm. there are some officials, there is some market chatter for a linger or stuff. And this is what we were already discussing. But, you know, the latest news we have is that uh, Valerie Rahan and the Lane advocates to interest rate cut in June. That is already we know. OK, and uh, uh, now what they are saying is they are shifting their comments are shifting their tone to let's see that if we have uh, we will look to, you know, that cautious tone, uh, cautious tone, just like the RBA and the Fed. but after this june rate cut okay so in easy words there is no uh, policy guidance or rate path what they have to say after the june rate cut it's just a black window nothing else mm -hmm. no guidance this is yeah thing. okay no yes that is the key thing sir no guidance ahead we don't know whether they go up or down and what you know casual term they use is ah oh, man just wait for the comments or wait for the upcoming data right yeah, <laughs> this is what yeah. they say yeah, yeah. Okay, so we don't know no, we don't know much uh, about that okay so this is the cautious tone i have already made this uh, slides you can uh, share these slides it's yeah. our it's already posted on our uh, social interesting media platforms. yesterday so, sorry adnan uh, interesting yesterday we got a, sure, we got an open trade on the euro pound uh, a long position and we went down again into our buy our buy position at uh, dot 85 and we bounced um, uh -huh. quite significantly again um, yesterday and again this morning we followed through. Um, so it's this, I, it's this thing you just touched on, the black hole thing. The, I think, uh, you know, uh, my guess is they're more or less nailed on for next week, the ECB. I think it's more, I think, you know, if we took another uh, yeah. poll closer, I think it'd be more than 80% chance of a rate hike just from the, <clears throat> obviously the comments some of those key players have said, and Mr. Pill in particular, the chief economist, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. Lane, uh, um, the chief economist at the ECB, not Mr. Pill, he's the one at the Bank of England, excuse me. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's it, it's looked like they will go, um, um, and but it's the uncertainty ahead, um, you know, that mm -hmm. could cause that euro to bounce off that key 85. So lots of buys yeah. for euro pound at 85 uh, or dot 85. Um, over the last um, one more thing, I'll add, I'll, I'll add one more thing, you know, there was a dilemma 
that uh, you know the central banks can't go ahead of uh, you know the federal reserve i mean once the federal reserve has taken its move and then the other banks will you know follow the pursuit or make their own move but now we had this comment from the philip lane uh, uh, you know it was said that they have you know broken their streak okay yes. they yeah, can yeah, yeah, yeah. go before that uh, federal reserve okay this is yeah. a very uh, you know blunt <laughs> statement i would say yeah, yeah, okay yeah, yeah. it can bit, go it, hawkish it, or always, bearish yeah 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 absolutely yeah yeah it, it, again i'd see it more as a, a quite a naive statement a naive sort of participant in the market they, they, they obviously listen to what others uh, others are doing and the fed remains the most uh, significant and most important obviously and everybody's uh, impacted by actions on the dollar but you know these guys are you know they're professionals uh, they're central bankers uh, and they they do what's best for them uh, as draghi you know once said he do whatever he needed to mm -hmm. do to defend the euro and he did exactly that so yeah. Um, yeah, interesting to see uh, what Mr. Lagarde yes. got to say. One more thing. Well. Yes, yeah. sir. One more thing I would like to add in the market chatter, you know, when you just go to the market chatter, you can mm -hmm. see one thing that now there is a chatter that maybe the Bank of England will also delay trade cuts to the August. Yes, definitely. Yes. It's more than chatter. Okay, yes. this is. Yeah, so. They, yeah. Yes, it's maybe it's more than chatter, but that is the thing that we have already been discussing last yeah. week when there was no such chatter. Okay, why? Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, by looking at the upcoming data and professionalism, uh, these things were, you know, like being seen. Okay, so these yeah, and, uh, and uh, and the, ele the election that... in the UK has obviously uh, triggered a change that as well. Um, there's still no clear. Yes, it looks like the Bank of England are still meeting on the twentieth, um, regardless of the election yeah. process. Though, but, okay. Uh, as yeah. as the uh, as the you know the technicals are concerned if you may have a look over here this uh, the jpy pairs are heavily oversold okay this mm. is the rsi 14 okay it's mm. a standard rsi 14 on the h6 h12 are uh, uh, day one and the weekly chart the mm. jpy is massively oversold especially against uh, the pound and the mm. uh, new zealand dollar okay mm -hmm. and the aud as well so if I can just share this, uh, the market snapshot uh, with you, and what is this, how I have got this snapshot over here, is this red dots are showing somewhat of a bearish movement, and this green dots are showing somewhat of a bullish movement, and how is this, if a candle, let me, uh, let me see you, if a candle closes higher than its previous candle high, and it's high, if, if the close of the previous candle, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. I'm just getting messed up. <laughs> if the current candle closes higher than the close of the previous candle and its high is higher high, then we get this green dot. Okay. And if the you know the close of the current candle is low than the previous candle and low than the close of the previous candle, we get this red dot. Okay. It's yeah, yeah, some sort yeah. of a higher, high, higher close and a lower, low, lower close candle. And this strategy was uh, uh, I forgot the name, it was maybe by uh, Jason uh, Stapleton. Yeah, it's Stratton. yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, yeah, lots, lots of traders use okay. this higher high and low low uh, technique. It's just confirmation he, he, uh, yes. of trends. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we, I mean, yeah. There's, it's not news that the yen's under pressure and it continues to be under pressure. Uh, I don't know if you can, if you just yes. put a chart of the of the pound yen on there, uh, Adnan, like the daily uh, chart. What I mean, it's had a, a absolutely stunning uh, run for. Um, uh, for uh, for um, yes, May this in one. Particular. I mean, yeah. If that's a, is that the daily one? But yeah, it's had a it's, it's, had a, a, it's a daily one run, uh, so far this month. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was a massive one. And then on the 29th of April, uh, there was uh, this chapter that, uh, you know, like the Bank of Japan has has an in, had an intervention of three point uh, thirty five billion dollars. And mm -hmm. 160 level is there. You know, it's the line on the sand uh, by the USD JPY. So what happened next, sir? They had this uh, line in the sand, and they had this. They had this intervention, and nothing happened next. They left it. <laughs> okay. Well, they did it, not know, pursue it, it, that. It, you know, again, speculators are very much. It's very, very much as I've been saying all month. It's very, very much in play at the end. So, uh, yeah, be careful trying to catch the top, or catch yes. the bottom, or catch the turn. As your chart really nicely demonstrates, there, that's a very, very strong uptrend over the last uh, certainly last two weeks. Uh, we'll yes, now. sir. And Secondly, we are uh, going. Yeah. Yes, sir. Going to this uh, uh, this uh, uh, pound yen chart, this this uh, you know this 
week over here this one this is considered to be in the language or in the terms of market profile it's considered to be a single print a single print is that uh, candle or that value or that price that has not been touched yet okay mm -hmm. so this in the terms of market profile is uh, known as an active or a very strong support and resistance so uh, at these highs if there is any intervention in the usd jpy 160 level then maybe this uh, movement can reverse okay mm. this is not a trading mm. advice it's not a recommendation it's mm. just technical mm. analysis yeah and, okay. and look where it is so, it's, at that, it's at that hugely psychological 200 level as well it hasn't been up this. Yeah. if you zoom i don't know if you put a weekly chart or a monthly chart on that adnan but uh, uh, you know we haven't been up at 200 um where we are now uh for a you know a very yes, very sir. long time so these are records yes uh, 255 yep yeah, yeah so we've got a stronger dot. well it's the weaker yen really as you said across all all the yen pairs so guys is there yes, anything sir. that you want us to have a look at we've got a couple of minutes left before we wrap up this morning we can uh we can share the calendar for today it's quite quiet um today uh as far as data is concerned uh as Adnan's just pointed out we've had the we had the, the miss for uh, retail sales in australia we had the um uh, bet, uh, weaker sort of shop numbers out of the UK as well this morning. But uh, the first big data point uh, of the week comes later on today. That uh, there we are. Thanks for that, Adnan. The uh, Consumer Board Consumer Confidence number. Remember, it's the the US consumer has been remarkably, remarkably resilient, uh, supporting this uh, recovery in the US um, and the big rise we've seen in asset prices uh, so watch that later we could have some significant uh, moves if there's a, a quite a there's been signs of a bit of weakness uh, from the US consumer so any signs of that coming mm -hmm. in uh, much less uh, than the mid 90s number 95 94 would be fine anything under 90 would be would spark some significant moves because um, it really is the um, consumer so then might if the consumer sh is showing signs of weakness it might then you know, push the Fed to perhaps cut earlier than later. But as, as Hadnan's just shown, even the September number now is under, or the September cut uh, seems to be under pressure as the, the confidence uh, seems to hold up. So anything over 97 or 98 or, you know, even touching 100, uh, you know, that will push out uh, the likelihood of a, of a rate cut as well, because it's showing that the, um, the, the, uh, the, the effects of the higher interest rates are biting. People are still, you know, out there. They're feeling confident it is a you know confidence number so yeah uh obviously uh, and obviously the week as the week rolls out we get to the end of the, the end of the month as well on friday uh with the other big big news yes. of the week and that's the uh the core pc and we'll but we'll, we'll uh, talk more about that uh obviously later in the week so uh if you're trading today obviously uh, always as ever uh trade with uh trade with caution uh i don't know and then do you show the i hope i hope should the the uh, risk disclaimer at the beginning, uh, 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 risk warning as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. CFDs yes, I have shown it. it. Yeah, good. Yes. All right, sorry, I, I joined you a little bit late. Um, it, it's obviously uh, important. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, Thursday, sir, I, I'd like to add US GDP as well. I'd, sorry, I'd like Adam, to add one yeah, thing. Before we finish, yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. I'd like to add. I'd like to add one thing that uh, uh, as the month ends on uh, you know uh, on the last day of this uh, month, but Wednesday is uh, the corporate month end. Okay, the last yes. two days uh, are very important. This is the corporate month end. Sir, will you sh uh, spread some light on this that our viewers can yes. understand what yes. this means it, and why it, is it, it important? It's 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 an accounting um, uh, um, uh, uh, position as well. Um, so you know. Uh, books are closed uh, on Wednesday as well. Wednesday, I'll say we got uh, the, mm -hmm. the second reading of uh, US GDP. It says preliminary, but it's the actual second reading of GDP. Expected yeah. to slip a wee bit. Uh, so yeah, some th three absolutely key yeah. Um, uh, yeah. data points this week, as well as that end of month uh, wrap up as well. We've also got some key companies still yes. reporting as well. For Salesforce uh, report their earnings this week. Uh, uh, today, in fact, yeah. So um, yeah, watch that as well as we go forward. Uh, we haven't touched on, on yes, the markets. Sir. We're just about to run out of time, but we had a strong, obviously, markets in the US were closed yesterday and they were here in London. Uh, but we had a good uh, close to the week, just to, I uh, made a note of it on Friday night, yeah. So the Dow was down 2.3% uh, for the week. Uh, S&P was virtually flat and the NASDAQ was the fifth consecutive week higher uh, on Friday's close at 1.4% um, uh, for the week. Uh, and some big movers last week as well. NVIDIA obviously was a, a big mover for the week, up 15% and up 2.5% on Friday. So hot stocks remain hot. The S&P closed on Friday, up back over that key 5,300 levels. So 
Uh, watch the market. Silver's had a bounce back this morning as well. So, guys, before we wrap up, uh, any questions? Yanis, Garrett, Mohammed, mm -hmm. Alpha, Gordon, anybody? Mm. Yeah. Sir, I'd like to add one thing. Uh, please, yeah. uh, viewers, keep in mind that uh, January the 1st is the blackout period uh, for the Fed. So anything, first, any yeah. news we have before that, uh, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> June right, 1st yeah. is the back, blackout period. Yeah, so yeah. please be careful. Uh, any info you get before this is that you need to, uh, you know, like uh, be worried about or you have to use into your analysis. And second well, yeah. thing that if I come towards this corporate end, uh, end of the month, uh, that is the Wednesday. So any major or big movements you see in these major pairs without any fundamental reason is just corporate and month flows. Okay, so be it, careful in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Added volatility, exactly. Yeah, there was lots of worry yesterday. Yes. Um, I was. I, we started with the yen, and there was lots of questions yesterday that perhaps they, you know, there might have been a bit of invent, intervention from the Bank of Japan yesterday in the quiet market, but that uh, clearly hasn't happened. So, but uh, yeah. Keep watching, <laughs> keep waiting, uh, and if you follow, if you're following yes. the trend, as with that uh, pound yen when we got there, you know, stay on the right side. That's a that's a very strong uptrend for the pound yen. Okay, guys, yes. if there's no questions, we'll uh, let you go, uh, and uh, we'll see you all again tomorrow. All the best, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you, thank you, sir. Have a good day, green peps. <laughs>